Hi, I'm Johnny, and thanks so much for visiting our website. You know, many people have written to ask, um, give us an update, Johnny. How are you doing with chronic pain? What's going on with your cancer? And I am so grateful for this chance to tell you a big heartfelt thanks for your prayers. I tell you what, it was, it was just around this time last year, I was finishing up that rigorous regimen of chemotherapy to battle that stage three breast cancer. Many of you know the details. And thankfully, the recent PET scan is clear. Um, I hope you can tell my strength and energy are back, and I am still resonating from your intercessions. I, honestly, I am. And I know people were praying. I mean, back then, I received so many emails. I read your posts on the blog and your notes. One woman wrote me and said, Johnny, this cancer could not have happened to a nicer person. <laughs> However, I must confess, most of the emails were more like, um, Johnny, you've got quadriplegia, you deal with chronic pain, and now a life-threatening illness. What, what is God doing? And I've got to admit, at first I wondered, Lord, what are you doing? I recall the first time I met with the oncologist shortly after my surgery. I was in his office. He laid out the plan for chemotherapy, how I'd have to head back into the hospital to have a catheter port surgically inserted into my chest. The toxic drugs would eat what little lean tissue I have. He told me that my already fragile bones would get weaker. Um, there would be a threat of blood clots, not to mention the side effects that he told me about. And I have to tell you what, when he left the room and closed the door, I looked at Ken and I just broke down in great heaving sobs crying over and over again, I can't do this, Ken, I can't, it's too much, I can't do this. But in the next breath, you know what you've got to say, don't you? But I can do all things through you, Jesus, as you strengthen me. And Jesus really showed up big time, especially through my husband, Ken. With every surgical procedure, I mean with every doctor's appointment, second, third opinion, x-ray, PET scan, chemo regimen, blood test, you name it, Ken was there for better or for worse, in sickness and in health. What a guy. What a support he has been to me. And what a support the Word of God has been for both of us. We leaned so hard on Psalm 72, read it sometime, verses 11 to 14, where it says, God will deliver the needy who cry out, Oh God! He'll deliver the afflicted. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy. He will rescue them. Oh my goodness, what a promise. There were so many times I sensed God rescuing me, especially at night when I was sick and I could not sleep. And even now that I'm experiencing another bout with chronic pain, even now at night when I feel like caving in, throwing in the towel, I will lie there, I will rally my senses, I will tell my soul to come into alignment. Come on, spirit, stand at attention. Why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope, come on, put it in God, your Savior. You know, if you had, if you had been there at night, you, you'd find me praying, oh Jesus, my emotions keep telling me to doubt and fear is crouching at the door but I can't succumb, I can't give in. I don't want to smear your reputation on Jesus. I don't want to embarrass you. So I am trusting you, please pull me through. And during those urgent moments, I'm convinced I was winning a battle. God was proven to be as kind and caring as the Bible portrays him. I was helping to make him famous, illustrious, celebrated, his reputation applauded, and during those Nighttime battles so bizarre and twisted. I'm convinced he was shown to be as compassionate as the Bible makes him out to be. I look back and I can easily see that my battle against cancer was a spiritual battle. More than anything else, it was a spiritual battle. Because no matter what the hardship, no matter if I'm having pain or if I'm having a difficult day in this, this wheelchair of mine, the trust I show God, that you show God, it drives Satan up a wall. I dared not think that I was isolated or alone or in a vacuum like, uh, okay, nobody's watching today. I think I'm just gonna throw in the towel and succumb to self-pity and depression, thinking no one cares, no one notices. 
mm -mm, no. I dared not let myself go down that dark, grim path. Never should you and I think that we suffer for nothing or that we suffer alone. The stakes are too high for that. Every day, you and I, we've got to remember that my life, your life, is elevated up on a cosmic stage, not unlike Job in the book of Job. I mean, I remember times when I felt like a warrior being roused by a far off bugle from a battlefield. I feel like, even now, maybe you do too, I feel a little like Job, whom Satan used to taunt God, saying, Job doesn't love you, God. He just loves your blessings. You're not great enough, Lord, to get someone to follow you on your own merits. Mm -mm. When it comes to cancer, pain, quadriplegia, whatever, I want my life to show that God is worth following on his own merits. So I'm with Job. I reply, though I've got quadriplegia, cancer, whatever, pain, though he slay me, yet will I put my trust in him. You know, when Job said that, a statement like that speaks highly of him, but it speaks far more highly of the God who can sustain him. And nothing deflates the devil more than when God's people choose the Lord over fear and doubts, when they choose their Savior over affliction and pain, and when through tears you whisper, I prefer you, Lord God. I choose you. I yield to you. I bow to you. It makes, it, it makes the life of the most insignificant person a front line on which the mightiest forces of the universe converge in warfare. And you and I, we've got the courage, we do. God will give it to you to step up onto that cosmic battlefield because we know who wins in the end, friend. So we can live rigorously and robustly and valiantly and courageously when we suffer. Forgetting what lies behind, we keep straining toward what is ahead. And I love those words in the book of Philippians implying that things are going to be hard. We're gonna to have to keep straining, keep pressing on toward the goal of winning the prize for which God has called us heavenward. And that alone can give such courage to live gallantly. For when we trust in Him in the midst of affliction, we get to make God famous. Wow. We get to make Him out as good as He really is. One day when Ken and I were driving home from chemotherapy, um, it was a particularly rough day and I was commenting to him on how our sufferings are like little splashovers of hell, you know, little spoonfuls of hell come early. And Ken, it, Ken said, well, Johnny, you know what splashovers of heaven are? We decided they're not the mountaintop experiences where everything is easy and breezy and bright, no. Splashovers of heaven or when you find Jesus in those splashovers of hell. Yep, that's just where you'll find Jesus, right in the middle of your personal hell. Just when you find yourself up against a dead end wall with no resources, nowhere to turn, God tells you to turn around and do the impossible, walk through the wall. And lo and behold, who do you find in the middle of that wall? Jesus. Jesus, who was such an expert at walking through walls, enabling and empowering you to do the impossible. I don't know what kind of headache or heartache you're going through this day, but I want you to remember that God permits what he hates to accomplish things that he loves. And what does he love? Christ in you, the hope of glory. If this message has encouraged you, I hope you'll tell somebody to Click on our website and give it a listen to. Pass it on, the link. And if you've got a comment to leave, then just post it on my blog. I'd love to hear your perspective on this. And I'd love to hear how we can pray for you with Johnny and Friends. Our Johnny and Friends staff every morning meets for prayer, and we love taking your needs before the throne of God's grace. So let us know how we can pray for you. God bless you. and. Um, Thank you for making God famous in the midst of your heartache and hardship. And thank you for being a friend to Johnny and Friends.